But look at the graphics. You get the idea here, right? What is that thing? Chicken. Hey everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the On Roku TV, specifically the 65 inch version. If you're interested in this TV or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. You can't miss it, it's big, it's orange, it looks great. We're at the back side of the box right now, looking at some of the tech specs and features that this TV has to offer. So obviously we got Roku built right in, that's your TV operating system and interface. It's my favorite one on the market today. It's just so easy clean and simple to use. This TV's 4K featuring 2160p, that's our full 4K resolution, a DLED display, wireless streaming, three HDMI inputs. This has 60 hertz for the refresh rate. And if you're looking for a VESA mount option, you wanna hang this on the wall or get a different stand, just make sure it supports 300 by 300 millimeters. We have all of our connections, a QR code, and a nice screenshot of the Roku mobile app if you wanna use your iOS or Android device to control this TV. Now let's take a tour of the rest of the box. So on this side, you'll see all of our connection options right here, AV in and composite, three HDMI ports with HDMI three being our ARC port, USB, LAN, headphone jack, coax, cable connector, optical audio. Further down, we have our TV dimensions right here. You can't miss it on this side, 60 hertz refresh rate, all of your favorite streaming apps available to download, sample image of the remote control. For you Apple fanboys out there, works with Apple AirPlay and Apple HomeKit, assembled in the US, works with Google. Here are all the contents. We have the TV itself with all the other parts and components on it, our product literature right here, safety and compliance information, followed by a QR code to scan to activate and register our product for its two year warranty. Next, we have a quick start guide. This walks us through what's in the box, how to install the stand, customer service and contact information right here. You can call them directly daily if you need any help. Opening it up, we have our remote control settings, how to connect our devices, how to connect our devices part two, set up an activation, and there's a look at the back side again. We already saw that info, QR code to register our product and our initial intro page. Next, we have six screws included, three for each leg that's included. We have two AAA batteries for the remote control. And here's the remote control that we got. It has Netflix, Disney Plus, Apple TV, and Hulu. And our volume control buttons are on the side and you can pop off the back cover here to install the two included batteries. Next, we have the legs themselves. Again, three screws for each one. They're metal, so nice quality construction to be able to support the weight of the TV. And as you can see, they're identical to each other. All right, the stand has been installed. Look at the TV, this is massive. Up at the top, we got our energy guide sticker right there some instructions to remove all the protective film and tape, Roku's logo and branding. We got the on logo and branding. Here's a nice side profile of the TV right there to get a feel for how thick it is. Got our integrated power cord with some cable tie storage right there. Our Visa mount, if you wanna use your own wall mount, you got the mounting option right there for you. And then we have all of our ports and IO. So right here on the side, a reset button, HDMI 3, which is our ARC, HDMI 2, optical audio, headphone jack. Down below, we have all the rest of our ports here. So we have our cable, antenna, coax connector, HDMI 1, composite video for you legacy users there. So yellow and then left, right audio. LAN, if you guys wanna connect an ethernet cable, you can do that, as well as a USB device right there. Don't forget this does have built-in Wi-Fi as well that you can use. Now let's go ahead, let's power it on and set it up. Now we have the TV plugged in, powered on, and we're ready to set it up. So the first step is to choose your language. Then you'll be prompted to connect to the internet. Then you'll sign in or create a Roku account where if you already have Roku devices, it'll pull all those apps and things over to set up this TV for you and you won't miss a beat. If you're new to Roku, you'll be able to um, walk through a couple extra steps, adding some features, 
app, streaming services, things that you want, and it's optional. You will be able to add a credit card to the TV if you want to rent movies or sign up for streaming services in the future, but just know that is optional. You don't have to enter your payment information if you don't want to, and please don't fall for any Roku scams. There's no activation fees or anything like that. I'm not sure if that's still a thing, but it does not cost any money to set up your TV, okay? Do you hear me? Don't fall for anything out there, guys. You're better than that. Just follow the steps here, sign up and create your Roku account, and then you'll be all set and ready to go to start enjoying your TV. All right, so we have the TV all set up and ready to go. To the left-hand side, you're looking at the menu. To the right-hand side, it's whatever menu setting you have highlighted. So in this case, here's our main home screen. These are the couple of apps that I went ahead and downloaded to get the TV set up. Yours will look completely different depending on the apps that you have downloaded. You may notice very easy to navigate and find exactly what you're looking for. So we have our home screen, what to watch. So we have some nice suggested content, recommended channels. We have featured free. So if you're looking for some free content, this is where you're gonna to wanna to browse. Then we have live TV. If you're looking to watch some live TV, here you go. A couple different news channel stations, things like that. The buzz if you're interested. Discover what's hot and jump right in. Search if you wanna search for whatever you're looking for. And here's popular movies, TV shows. We have a movie store if you want to purchase any movies. TV store, same thing. Streaming channels, this is where you're gonna add all of your favorite apps, streaming services, things like that. Very easy to do. Just select which ones you want and download them. My feed settings with the welcome video, movies, TV shows, movies coming soon. And then we have all of our actual TV device settings, our network information, remotes and devices, theme, accessibility, TV picture settings, TV inputs, audio, parental controls, home screen, payment method if you want to add a payment card, Apple AirPlay and HomeKit settings, legal notices, privacy, help, and then we also have our system settings right here. What's important about this is you might want to access the control other devices settings right here. And then further down we have screen mirroring, software updates, guest mode, maybe you're using this for like an Airbnb or something. Advanced system settings could be important if you ever need to conduct any sort of reset, whether it's a factory reset or network or device connection. And then we're back to the beginning for our system settings. But that's a quick look at the menu, the home screen, and everything this TV has to offer. If you wanna customize your layout, it's very easy to do. Let's say, for example, we want to move Netflix. Just press the star button on your remote control, and we have the move option right here. We also have remove channel. So let's select move, and now we can position it wherever we want. Now I wanna show you how fast and responsive the apps are with this TV. So here's Hulu. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna open it up. It's loading right away. Some of this will vary depending on the internet connection and the speed that you have. But it's really nice here, very quick. And then we can exit out just like that. Now let's pull up um, Netflix. Let's do the same thing. So here we go. Just takes a second. Now we need to sign in and we're all set and ready to go. So pretty cool, very easy to use. And the TV's very fast and responsive. Now I wanna show you the built-in TV menu settings where we can look at some picture settings, some additional options. So I have ABC News Live streaming right now. Let's go ahead, let's hit the settings, star button. We have our sleep timer, off all the way up to three hours. We have our sound mode settings right here. We have different options to configure. We have volume mode. We have picture settings right here. We can adjust brightness low power mode for our picture setting, but here's the different modes. We have movie, we have normal, we have sports, and we have vivid, low power, movie, normal, sports, and vivid. You get the idea, it really changes the picture, so choose the one you want. Maybe you are watching a movie and you like the movie setting, choose that picture mode. This is just something you'll have to change frequently, depending on your preferences. I just like to leave mine at normal, and then I'm all set and ready to go, but it's up to you and what you want to do. Picture size, we can adjust the size if we need to. 
dynamic contrast, couple different options there. Color temperature, do you want it warmer or cooler? Again, I'll leave it on normal. We can reset the normal settings. We can apply these settings to all inputs. We can also fine tune the picture. This could be important if you really want to tweak it. Maybe you're not happy with how something looks. You got to bump down the contrast or increase the sharpness, change the color of the tint. You can do that right here very easily. And then we're back to the beginning with our TV brightness. That's a quick look at our picture settings. Then we can manage our channels right here. We can select favorite channels. We can edit our channel lineup if you want. We have some accessibility and caption settings. Then we have our picture off if we want to turn the whole display off. And then we're back to the beginning of our TV settings with our sleep timer again. Now we have the UFO test up on the TV. I love this test to just show you why it matters to have a higher refresh rate with higher FPS values. So this TV is 60 Hertz and you're looking at 60 FPS at the top, then 30 FPS in the middle and 15 at the bottom. So pretty substantial difference as we increase those FPS values at 60 Hertz. The aliens a lot smoother at the top than the bottom. It's really staggery and sputtering and just lagging behind. So that's why it's important when you look at the spec of a TV to make sure to bare minimum, which this is as low as you can really get 60 Hertz. If you can find a TV that is 120 Hertz and you're a gamer, you will appreciate that a lot better, assuming you have a console or a PC or something that can push those higher FPS values to match or exceed the refresh rate. Now let's talk about backlight bleed with this TV. So we have all the studio lights off. You may still see a reflection of the computer RGB in the screen. We have a little bit of light leaking in the window, but it's fairly, fairly dark in here. Looking at it head on, I'm walking around looking at it too. It's not bad at all. It's better than I would expect. I do feel like once you start looking at it off to the side, you may notice some spots here or there. But for a TV this size and at this price, nothing's like exceptionally bad or standing out to me like it's, you know, a deal breaker or anything like that. Now let's talk about AirPlay. So I have it pulled up right here from our iPhone. We have a sample video, if you can see that right there. Let's go ahead, let's push play. Here's a sample video we're gonna use to AirPlay from our iOS device to our on Roku TV. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Everything worked great with AirPlay right there. Very responsive. The audio and video was in sync. So really happy with that AirPlay experience. It's nice to know on a TV like this, it's gonna be able to process a request like that from our device, whether it's screen mirroring or air playing, this TV is capable of handling that task. Now I'm casting a YouTube video to the TV so we can sample a couple of seconds of the song, Keep Em Knockin' by Music Chef off their album, Speaker Knockers. Music Chef is home to DMCA free, stream safe music. So let's give it a listen. I'll turn the volume up and down so you can hear how everything sounds from the built-in speakers on this on, see what I did there, Roku TV. Volumes maxed out. So that's just a quick audio sample for you. I highly recommend whatever TV you end up going with, invest in some really nice 
TV sound bars or external speakers, Roku actually makes wireless speakers that pair seamlessly with this TV or any Roku TV that I highly recommend you invest in. You'll really enjoy that standalone audio quality a lot better than any sort of TV internal speaker can give you. Now let's talk about input lag. So we have our input lag tester right here. Let's see the results that we get. So currently our input lag is right around, looks like 22.9 milliseconds. We'll check the middle value as well. This will be higher. So we're looking at right around 30.5 milliseconds. And then up at the bottom, I should say down at the bottom, we have 37.6.7 milliseconds. So you get the idea here. Just remember this result. So our input lag for this TV right now is 23 milliseconds. But watch what happens as we change the picture setting to game mode. You want to make sure that you have game mode turned on. Some of your consoles like the PS5 will or should turn it on automatically for you. So let's try again and see the results here. And check this out. Look at that. Pretty substantial difference. So we're still going to be slower than a computer monitor that usually comes in right around one millisecond. But that is so much better that we can get that good performance out of a TV that's this size. So for the average casual gamer user, you're not going to have any issues at around four milliseconds for your input lag. I'm sure you're wondering about next gen consoles. So we have a PlayStation 5 connected to the TV right now and here's our video information. We are getting 3840 by 2160. That is full 4K resolution at 60 Hertz. So if you're using a next gen console or any console for that matter, this is going to be the max spec you'll be able to get. This can't do 4K 120 or anything like that because the TV itself doesn't have that high of a refresh rate. So whether it's PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, 3840 by 2160 at 60 Hertz is what you'll be able to get for the best resolution and refresh rate possible on this TV. Now, it wouldn't be a TV review without me actually showing you some of that next-gen gameplay here on the TV. So we got Fortnite pulled up, 60 FPS at full 4K. Look at the graphics. Pay attention to the movement of the bus. I want to show you guys that just so you can get an idea for the quality here. Try to notice any screen tearing, anything like that. So not trying to make you dizzy. Just want you to be able to really understand what you're able to accomplish with this TV if you're looking the game. Beautiful graphics. Let's go into this tornado. Cool. Oh, I can't go any further. What am I? Well, that's fun. Let's go. But look at the graphics. You get the idea here, right? What is that thing? Chicken. Come on. Yeah, let's go, baby. Got him. So there's a lot to love about this on Roku TV. I'm really tempted due to the screen size to upgrade my current TV, which is the 50 inch version of this TV. I've been using it for a couple years in my family room. It's my primary TV. I've had zero issues. This is a fantastic budget friendly smart TV with 4K and a ton of other great features like AirPlay and the ability to do screen mirroring, things like that. What I like about any TV that has Roku built in is basically they have a minimum spec for their operating system. So you know you're in good hands in regards to the internal components and the quality because it has to pass a certain threshold to be able to even, you know, get the badge and have Roku TV available on it. So I personally don't care too much about brand. I care more about, you know, best bang for my buck. And these on Roku TVs really are that best bang for your buck that you can buy. Sure, it doesn't have 120 hertz. The built-in speakers don't sound the best, 
But again, you get what you pay for. And I've been using my 50 inch version for a couple years now with zero issues. I do want to point out that you might really want to look your TV over. When I bought my 50 inch, I did notice one dead pixel. Sometimes you can actually massage them out, but unfortunately the pixel that I had is like right up here and it's still dead, but it's really not noticeable unless the screen's black and you know where to look. But in this TV, I have a keen eye. I've been looking it over. I have noticed no dead pixels or anything like that. And again, my 50 inch has been running for a couple of years now with no new dead pixels or any other issues whatsoever. So as long as you open up the TV and it's not damaged in the box, you should be good to go for years to come and you'll really enjoy your new budget-friendly 4K on Roku TV at 65 inches. Thank <laughs> you.